we become a reflection of what we worship. Hey, YouTube theologians, Pastor Wolf Miller here, pr pressing on this idea a little bit. We did a video this week about how the liturgy imprints the shape of the heavenly council onto our conscience. I think that's an important argument for the liturgy. So if, if you missed that, uh, I'll put the link in the description. Someone remind me. But, uh, but I want to press on that a little bit further. My own thinking, and, and in five years we'll come back to this and, and, and have it all fleshed out, but if you don't mind me helping me workshop this idea, is that we are made, when, when Genesis tells us that we're made in the image and likeness of God, there's an indication there that, that we are made of a reflective stuff, that we are imprintable, that we are, we, we, you know, we think of ourselves, even our minds, our identities, our who we are is sort of a, a set sort of thing. But the Bible does not look at people like that. And, and the act of worship or the engagement of worship, the human heart, soul, mind, and strength in worship has an imprint on us. Now, the clearest Bible passage that I know about this is, uh, is Psalm 115. Psalm 115 says, verse 3, important verse and following, But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths but do not speak. Eyes they have but they do not see. They have ears but they do not hear. Noses they have but they do not smell. They have hands but they do not handle. Feet they have but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter with their throat. Those who make them are like them, and so is everyone who trusts in them. <laughs> that is King David. And Isaiah picks up on that. Isaiah 44. I, I looked it up, I forgot. Where the parable is, it's so great. The Lord talks about how the men of Israel go and they find a nice tree and they cut it down. And with half of the tree, they make an idol. And they fall down and worship it. And then with the other half of the tree, they cook dinner and grill their steaks. <laughs> the foolishness of idolatry. But here's the, the impact, especially that that Psalm 115 says, is that that falling down to worship actually reshapes us. There's this old quip that in the beginning God made man in his image and ever since man has been returning the favor. But it goes beyond that. It's not that it's not that we're like creating gods in our own image, we are, but that those gods which we create recreate us. They reshape us. They have eyes they don't see. You worship them, you become blind. They have feet but they don't move. You worship them and you become stuck. Ha! I always kind of liked this sculpture. It's the pickles that make this sandwich. The idols are dead. And they share their death with everyone who worships them. The idols demand human sacrifice. That's how my professor... 
The idols demand human sacrifice. That's how my professor at seminary taught it to me. And it's true. There's always the way to life and the way to death. And idolatry always leads to death. So you can always tell what someone is worshiping by what they are sacrificing themselves and the things around them to. That's the object of their worship. This has to do with the logic that Paul puts forth in Romans chapter 1. Romans 1, where the, the argument is, there's a word in Greek, homo, which means same. It's made its way into a few English words like homo sapien. Let the reader understand that Paul is talking about Romans 1. He makes this, he makes this connection. He says, if we start to worship creation, we creatures worship creation. We're worshiping the same thing. And that sameness to our worship starts to spread throughout all the commandments. We start to honor the thing that's the same as us. And that would be second commandment, third commandment, fourth commandment. We start to only uh, protect the thing that's the same as us and have compassion for the thing that's the same as us. That's the fifth commandment. And then even in the sixth commandment, to desire the thing that's the same as us. Again, let the listener understand. So, so that idolatry starts to reshape our own hearts in really um, profound ways. I was reading 2 Chronicles 11 in the airplane. I don't remember that text where it talks about, it's talking about Rehoboam and the idolatry being connected to the demons. That's related to Deuteronomy 32. First Corinthians 10, especially Philippians 3, where, where Paul talks about how their God is their belly, their end is destruction. So this idea that idolatry, we are consuming, but we end up being consumed uh, by the idols. Really interesting. One day I missed my a connection from Denver to, I don't know, here in Chicago. And this table is where I sat for 11 hours. And that's where I wrote the, and take their life, Martin Luther's Theology of the Martyrs, right here. <laughs> Maybe I should miss another flight. Anyway, here's the point, that just like the Worship is receiving, and all that the demons can give is lies, emptiness, death, nothingness. But the opposite is also true. It's not that we become like the Lord when we worship Him. He's created us in His image, and worship, that is repentance, is the restoration of that image. It's bringing that image back back. It's renewing that image in us. Christ, who is the image of God, restores the image that was lost. Remember in the Exodus when the people were enslaved and Moses asked the Lord his name in the burning bush and he says, I am, and if I am, then you, my people, will be. <laughs> if the Lord lives, then we are alive. If the Lord is kind, then we are the 
recipients of that kindness. If the Lord is holy, we are righteous. So we worship the God who is risen from the dead. And we will also rise on the last day and live forever before him. That's our hope and our peace. So we pay attention to our worship, how it goes. <laughs> if we worship the the dead and the the dead and still idols and we become stuck ourselves and foolish, or when we worship the true God and He gives us life. Oh, that's what we're after. May God grant it for Christ's sake. Okay. Okay. Outside security.